Well, hello. Yes, we are back here with more Digital Trends Live. Thank you for everybody who's joining us on whatever platform. We just went live, and here's what's happening right now. We're getting ready for the Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event, where we're going to see everything that Samsung has to unveil. There's a lot. We're going to kind of walk through a little bit of what we expect to see at this, but I want to emphasize that we're broadcasting live, and we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on all these different platforms, and that means this is what we're going to do. We're going to watch this with you. This is a watch party. So we're going to tell you what we think, but we want to see what you have to say too. We want to share those comments. We want to talk to you about this. What do you expect? What are you most excited about? And as we go through the event, we'll be simulcasting it. So it'll be right here on this same channel. You don't have to go anywhere else to watch the Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event. You'll be watching it with us uh, as we see what they unveil. But let's get it started right now. I'm Greg Nibbler here with Mr. Caleb Dennison. Hello, Caleb. Good morning, Greg. Thank you for joining us here for this. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I believe we uh, did this last year uh, I believe together. We did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's funny with these with these events, you know, every company kind of makes a big deal now and has their ones, but it has their big events. But Samsung's is certainly one of the premier ones where you know you have them, you have Apple, you have Google, some of these major companies with their big announcements. And I always like to see just how they do the presentation. Yeah, you know, what are their bells and whistles going to look like? Well, it's definitely the I would say it's the foremost phone reveal of the year. I mean, usually with Apple. Uh, reveals uh, that's obviously a big deal, but uh, right. you may not you may get a, a phone or two, or uh, it's mixed with iPads and and other devices. Samsung will do something similar here, but I think this is going to be one of the biggest phone reveals uh, yeah. of the year. And there's uh, some specific stuff I'm hoping to see. When you talk about like how they do their presentation, though, it could go any number of different ways. The way that a lot of tech companies like to do this is talk about themselves Yes, in a very flattering light. We are the best at this, the leader at that, the number one hoo-ha, how many apps and <laughs> this, that, and the other thing. So we do expect a little bit of that. You know, we wade through that. We'll try and make that a little bit more fun yeah. uh, than it would normally be if you were just watching it without us, you know. Right. But then ultimately we will get to the devices and we're going to get into some, you know, down and dirty analysis about those devices, uh, you know, where they stand in the market, what we can hope for from them. Right. It's going to be great. I'm going to love it. And there's some things that we certainly expect, you know, to come out, obviously, with the Samsung S20. I want to showcase, too, since we are live, we've got Corey Gaskin down there, our mobile editor. We've also got Jeremy Kaplan, our editor-in-chief, who are live at the event. And so what's going to be happening, we're going to watch this thing live. We're going to see what Samsung announced. And then at the end of it, we'll be going live to Corey on the show floor from this event, ideally with some of the devices in the hand. We'll be able to ask him questions live, what he just saw, you mm -hmm. know, and kind of walk through what that whole experience was like. And that's part of the fun things of this. We've also got Andy Boxall, who's there reporting as well. So follow along on Twitter. But this is something, you know, as soon as this does go, we'll be going there. But I will say, you know, for this event, Obviously, the Samsung S20, the new line, uh, skipping from S10 to S20, that's going to be a big, big thing that we're going to expect. They've got, we're thinking three phones with that, uh, the S20, the S20 Plus, the S20 Ultra, not expecting that mid-level one that we kind of saw last year with the 10e, and then also, you know, you had Google with the Pixel 3a. Right. It sounds, and again, you never know until it actually happens, but it sounds like Samsung's going away from announcing any of those mid-tier ones to start off with with this and just sticking with the premium high-end phone. Well, yeah, they did recently uh, and quietly unveiled the A20, which is a mid-tier phone that does support 5G. They have that out already, yeah. so I think that they're really sticking to flagship products for this uh, particular launch event. So you think the A20 will kind of fill that? I think the A20 the attempts S20 to, yeah, exactly, it needed. attempts to fill, fill that gap. Um, and, you know, it was a nice phone. I saw it uh, when I was at IFA in Berlin. Yeah. We got a chance to take a look. It was a really nice phone, you know. Yeah. It was kind of a mid-tier, mid-price kind of thing. So I think that's that fills that gap. This is probably going to be about the big stuff. The big the big premium ones. And obviously another big premium one, which was a surprise unveiling. We didn't know if they were going to actually have it at this event, but clearly they have to now. And that is the Z Flip. All right, it does look like it's getting underway. So we're going to go ahead and, and take this now. And again, we're watching it live with you, so we'll be able to hear what they're saying and, uh, and, and watch it live. So join in. Let us know your comments. Let's see how they start this thing off.
spent a week or more when I don't touch base with myself and I when will I give it up when will I put it down when will it cease to be the only thing in my life that I read that ain't nothing new and so we shake up the day All right, so there we are, just starting it right up with the Z Flip, really going right into it. Please welcome to the stage, head of UK mobile product marketing, Rebecca Hurst. Interesting move. Yeah. I didn't think this would be what they would start with. But it's also interesting, though, that they already released Hello the commercial everyone. for it at the Academy Awards. Welcome to Samsung Galaxy Unpacked. Last year, right here in San Francisco, we, we added a whole new dimension the smartphone experience with the revolutionary Galaxy Fold. The Fold was more than a new device. It was the first entry in an entirely new era of smartphone history. Today, we're taking another giant step forward. A giant step forward. We're Twice. changing okay. the shape of the future That's with the Galaxy Z Flip as I'd call it, the Z Flip. And smartphones are a part of our everyday lives, but this is no ordinary smartphone. It changes everything. Our phone's shape, size, and the very way we use it. That's what innovation, true innovation, is all about. The Galaxy Z Flip is a statement smartphone. It's for trendsetters and trailblazers, it's like nothing you've ever experienced before in a new, perfectly compact form factor. This device is an icon, a standout smartphone for people who want to stand out. And it all starts mm -hmm. with a playful, speed. premium design. Let me show you. I gotta say, I do like the des design of it. Yeah, I dig uh, it as well. When it's okay. closed, it is a thing of beauty. It's smooth and sleek and symmetrical. And at half its full size, it fits right in my palm and snugly in my pocket. And the cover display shows me all the information I might need at a glance. When I'm ready to use it, all I have so, to do uh, is flip it open. And I get a full size 6.7 inch screen with hardly any bezel. The ultimate immersive experience for the ultimate smartphone. And certainly smartphone. from here, you don't see a visible screen. And scene. the color is just as right. stunning. Right, but although Look at how under, it gleams, whether I keep the phone open or closed. On the commercial that they actually aired, there was a disclaimer. The Galaxy Z Flip comes in normal. three mm -hmm. gorgeous happen. colors mirror purple, mirror black. And in select countries, a mirror gold. Ooh, you like that one? <laughs> These stylish <laughs> colors change That's a saucy, when oh, the light hits a saucy them. little statement so you'll there. You'll always be catching attention and turning heads. I think I heard Corey Gaskin. And when closed, it lets you disconnect without missing out. You can check the time, get notifications of a text, alarm, or a call. All the essentials are right there on the cover display. You can even take a selfie without opening up the phone. Just hold out the rear camera and use the cover screen as a viewfinder. With this phone, we've done the impossible and created ultra thin glass that folds. Now you might think that a foldable glass would be brittle, but this glass is built to last and it protects your screen from scratches. It's so durable, you can fold and unfold your phone over 200,000 times. Every time you fold it, you're not just bending glass, you're bending the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. You can see for yourselves, this phone and its display are like nothing ever made before. Unfolded, the Galaxy Z Flip puts entertainment in your hands with a cinematic screen and with the world's first hole punch camera in a foldable display, you get the same sprawling, expansive screen you come to expect from Galaxy smartphones. The Fold didn't have and a hole punch, huh? 
As an mm -hmm. added bonus, we're, gi we're giving Galaxy users access to YouTube Premium. Ooh. <laughs> well, I mean, you That's spend that much on a phone. Yeah. Like, Sweet. Yeah, give me some free closed. stuff. <laughs> it's beautiful when it's open. But what about everything in between? This is what I want to know. We other built software a free advantages. stop hinge so it can stay open at different angles, mm -hmm. just like your laptop. Okay. We call it flex mode. In flex mode, you get a new kind of smartphone experience. Your screen is split into two parts. That's what I want to know. A viewing area mm -hmm. and an interaction area. That was in the commercial area. too, though, right? And we optimize some of it your was. favorite apps for this, so they'll automatically adjust. For example, Key thing to remember, if you're watching the whole YouTube phone, and you want to leave a comment, you can watch on the top half of the screen giant. and comment right. on the bottom. You can even prop your phone up by itself and video chat or take a selfie hands-free. Let me show you. That's a, that's a cool feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah my phone out of my pocket and prop it here on the podium. And we're going to take a selfie. So open the camera app. And ready? <laughs> Cheese! I mean, that Let's see if my eyes actually open in this one. Mm -hmm. Gesture. So, oh, so I go down to the, um, open yeah. the gallery app. And you'll see I can scroll across the bottom half of the screen where some of my other pictures are saved. So here you'll see there's more of animals than there are of people, but that's just my life. <laughs> you can well, see for yourself, we custom built a whole new mobile, mobile experience watch party, watch this to take live, advantage of so this unique the form factor. In the and flex so mode John, changes Paul the boundaries Rooms, of what's possible. You lean, anybody just just imagine you'd be able YouTube to take right a night hyperlapse video without a tripod like the one you see here. We push mobile engineering to its limits to create this device, and none of it would have been possible without our new one-of-a-kind hideaway hinge. Oh, yes. The hinge is the backbone of any folding phone. It quite literally holds the whole thing together, and it also prevents particles like dust and sand from getting into the, into the phone and damaging the display. That's one of the concerns. Now that's yeah, because folding fold. phones have a tiny, tiny gap between the hinge and the device. We created a layer of fibers inside that tiny gap to keep the particles out. This secure fiber shield protects your phone so you can make the most of this revolutionary technology. We are so proud of the Galaxy Z Flip. It is a unique piece of technology, one that changes the smartphone experience entirely. Take a look. Shabam, pow, blop, whiz. Shabam, pow, All right, do you want it? That's the question. Uh, honestly, this is the kind of foldable phone that I would want. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I like it key to me is price, and I want to know more about what those features are on the outside of the phone when it's folded. Right. Because she's like, oh, it's got everything that you could possibly use. I saw a clock. But yeah, that's that's all I saw. I, I know on the commercial it showcased answering a call, but you still have to open it back up from what I It would be great if it did, um, you know, caller ID, uh, text notifications. Text, yeah. How big is that? How big is that screen on the front? You know, is it really just that tiny little... Oh, you see a little bit of that there. That's a very, very small window of information. And this seems to be basically the same commercial they showed during the Academy Awards. Right. Maybe it's a little bit extended. Um, maybe not. Maybe it's the exact same thing. Yeah. I think it is. Well, if you weren't watching the Oscars, then you wouldn't have seen it. Um, I've looked at on YouTube. Some people were asking if they already showed the, the S20. Galaxy no, they're starting with this. Yeah. I know. Kind of won't talk because over her, but. a new decade of Samsung innovation, and we can't wait to see what you can, what you do with it. it 1400 bucks. That's my guess. 14th, and it's available starting at $1,000. Nailed it! Pretty close. <laughs> Pretty 80. close. Kind of a mixed response. <laughs> no, I mean, I figured it would be 1400 bucks. We have a lot to show you today, and we are just getting started. It's a heck of a Valentine's Day gift. It's unpacked, yeah. we're doing it in style, literally. We've teamed up with one of the biggest names in fashion to bring his signature style to the Samsung Galaxy. We're not just creating a new look, we're showing how high fashion and high tech go hand in hand. And only one person could lead this disruptive collaboration. 
Tom Brown. Oh, the disruption. That's so disrupted right now. So they really are focusing on the design side of things mm -hmm. with this. That seems to be a real key thing that they're bringing up. I would like to know more about functionality um, myself. Like I said, I want to know what the front of that does. Yeah, let's get let's like, get the deets on the battery. Let's get the deets on the camera. What kind of processors in there? Yep. If the front screen were a dead, and it doesn't look like it's a full front screen, that's where. No, it doesn't. It looks like a, a small window of information. Oh, there's the Galaxy Buds. Oh, yeah, we're expecting some. Galaxy is that Buds a, Plus. Is that a ring in there, too, or a watch? Uh, I saw a watch, watch was in there, yeah. So you're going to get a watch and Buds. Now, we just know that's the Tom Brown edition of some Thank of their you. devices. I'm very yeah. excited to be working with Samsung on this new project. For decades, Samsung has pioneered innovations in mobile technology, creating a world of its own, always moving forward. You sense a really strong collaboration because you understand the experience of the two worlds. In the attention to design, the attention to technology. Uh, I always find these awkward. Is truly timeless. Dude is reading something device, that Samsung PR wrote meet, and yeah. bringing together fashion and technology in a unique mobile experience. Right, you're going to make the phone look slick. We That's great. We created something truly special, and we look forward to sharing it with you. And there's more to come during tomorrow's special event in New York. Yeah, that was not that flashy of a. Nope, thing not there, necessary. They should have just run this vid right here. So some questions coming in on yes. YouTube. Is that the new watch? Is that the new Galaxy Buds? We don't know. We just know that there's a Tom Brown edition of a watch and Galaxy Buds. But I do think we're going to see Galaxy Buds Plus uh, unveiled a little bit later in this. I mean, if you're going to put it with the Z Flip. Right. I expect a new watch and new Buds. Yeah. I mean, at least The name Tom Brown buds. is synonymous with style. He's made a career by pushing the boundaries Which of Which explains what's why possible. I've never heard of the guy. I like <laughs> don't know Tom Brown. It's the perfect partnership, and we're excited about this limited edition collaboration. You'll hear more about this partnership tomorrow straight from New York Fashion Week. But first, we have so much more to tell you about the next decade of Samsung innovation and the incredible technologies that will shape our lives in the years to come. And that starts right now. Okay, so it's going from one to the other. Yep. With the exception of Tom Brown reading a script, this has been, you know. It's not too bad. No. no. Yeah, the Tom Brown thing, not necessary. Um, I get he's probably an amazing designer that I don't know, but uh, I think some of the comments come through. Yeah, I'm going to buy it because someone named Tom Brown says mm -hmm. Probably a very important design that I just made. So what are we showcasing right here? We don't know yet. Yeah. That's, they're keeping us in suspense. So we're going straight into the S20? That seems like the logical move. Right. Now that you're blinded, here's a product. Oh dear. Oh boy. <clears throat> oh boy. Got some drama going. I want the entrance for Digital Trends Live to be like this every day. Yeah. I really Ladies wish we could like, Please give a warm set this up so. Get you a spotlight, Greg. Right, yeah. Dr. It's a, a fog machine. Dr. That'd be PM Rome. Thank you, and welcome to Galaxy. Unpack 2020. It's uh, amazing to be here with you today to kick off a brand new decade of growth and change. We start 2020 with a renewed momentum, great confidence. Yes, this is the kind of thing of that I usually we hear right at the, the top. Yeah. In front of us. Opportunities that begin right here, 
yeah. right now. Let's see, can we launch insert that phrase to any event. Mm -hmm. Innovation. Innovator Innovation changing that is lives. More meaningful Connecting and people. That'll be a phrase. Yep. Innovation that is more private and secure. Innovation that will create more intelligent connections across devices, people, businesses, connections. and communities. There you go. Connections. I know I speak for everyone. And Bixby. When I say mm -hmm. Bixby will be involved. It's an incredible time to be at the start of this chain to drive growth for our industry and to provide meaningful progress for consumers. Is that G for growth or G for Google? Well, Google so is going to be showcasing something here. Yeah. the mobile communication business at Samsung. And I would not be where I am today without my mentor, CEO, DJ Bo. I was going to say, yeah, where's DJ Ko? Thank you, DJ, for your ongoing leadership. Is he not at the event? Um, no, they'll in save my him time for at Samsung, yeah. he's got to be there. I have led the development of many of the key breakthroughs in our most innovative. I think Jeremy said he might actually have been sitting Galaxy right in front devices. of them. Oh, really? Starting with the holding first uh, one of the phones. Galaxy S. Here we go. Oh no, we're going to go through a timeline. Throughout our history. We have been guided by our belief in innovation that improves our customers' lives. And driven by our passion to overcome technology's <laughs> most difficult challenges so <laughs> Peru, we can deliver welcome to the show. Yeah, experiences that create a better world. We have never been afraid to Should they actually be asking how can you turn on these two innovation. idiots? or be the first to introduce devices that drive this industry forward. This is why in 2011, when we heard that consumers Season. wanted a more This is the point during all of these presentations where it just like slows down. It's like, come on, can't yep. go in with the Z the Flip and then go to a looking back at what we've done. We already know. Note. Yeah, I remember the Galaxy line. We I've got one in my pocket right year. now. Yeah. When we heard that, Consumers want more multitasking, even bigger screens that would still fit in their pocket. We imagined the future of mobile experiences by launching the Galaxy 4. We're really, we're going all the way back to the Galaxy 4? I mean, and it is why I, that's the fold. When we saw a future of high resolution images, mm. high definition Wait. video, no, I no, no. the goal. We pioneered the key advancements that make 5G possible today. Okay, I apologize. I hope maybe I misunderstood that, but. Thank you. We need high speed, low latency, and massive capacity to connect millions of devices. 5G brings the transformative power to enhance <laughs> everything people can do with their phone. And now, Samsung is making 5G available to more people more quickly than anyone thought possible. So today, we are excited to show our next big step forward as we launch a new generation of intelligent connections. It begins with our vision to be the innovator of new mobile experiences oh. That Sorry. seamlessly and continuously wherever we go. Innovation, driving market forward, serving vision, customer interests. We are driving the convergence oh, and of convergence. the most yes. important technology of our time, 5G, AI, and IoT. I was ahead of George Samsung is on Facebook in a also. unique position to bring the benefits of this convergence into consumers' lives. With more than I'm one sorry, this entire thing was just unnecessary to me. Yep. Including Galaxy I mean. phones, wearables, and PCs. We already help hundreds of millions of people. This is the self-aggrandizing that we referenced earlier in the broadcast when we first got started. Invariably, lifestyle. you have to sit through this stuff. Yeah. And I, because they're not going to waste this audience. And trust 
expertise in the Samsung field. Knox, their security By platform. And the to end multi-way of protection that starts with a security chip built directly into the device. And with the open collaboration, we have partnered with the industry leaders to build an ecosystem that is unmatched in scale to provide game-changing mobile experiences. Today, we are so proud to introduce buzzy, buzzy, buzz the newest yep. member Spotify. of okay, the Galaxy cool. family. We partnered with Spotify by putting their app on our phone so you can listen to music and podcasts. New decade of change. A phone that says goodbye to the camera you know today and hello to a new way to see, see and share the world in its best light. With, with the intelligence that learns you like and optimize it. Yeah, Josh, to we mentioned that before. It. You know, this is par for the course a with pretty much any tech event. You just have to sit with through it. But I mean, uh, let's all admit that. Services. We just want to see the next phone. Like, yeah. get, get us the S20, let's dig into it. Still waiting for some of the tech specs on the Z Flip. They really skipped right past yeah. all new devices. Never mind okay. all this, it folds. This is just the first step toward a new generation of meaningful mobile experiences. I thought, I thought we were actually getting somewhere the first And now, it is my great pleasure to mm -hmm. introduce the brand new Galaxy S20. There Yay. There we go. Okay. And this is exciting. I, I do want to see what kind of specs are going to drive this. Okay. Let's Something tells me we're in for a whole bunch of camera goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. Four cameras. What I'm really looking forward to see is what they talk about the software of what those cameras can do. That's, there we go. That's what's so S20 that S20 plus Ultra. S20 Ultra. Ultra. Yep. Is that five that are on there? More? I, I can't tell exactly, but. I mean, Corey has oh, gone, Corey has gone on, uh, hands on the with these, by the way. We've ever. got that up on the, on the site. The is being captured and streamed with the amazing Galaxy S20. Thank you. Thank Man, you. the paid applause is really loud this year. <laughs> Thank you. No, it is. That's paid applause and it's loud. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage head of U.S. mobile product management, Drew Blackard. Great to be here in San Francisco. Last month marked the start of a new decade. And at Samsung, we are really looking forward to the next 10 years of Galaxy innovation. With that in mind, we've been working hard to create devices that are built for the way that we live our lives today. Our vision for the next decade of Galaxy all starts with 5G. Just last year, we unveiled five new 5G smartphones worldwide. In Korea alone, we helped bring 100,000 base stations online. And we've engineered new 5G chipsets that are smaller, cheaper, and power efficient. 5G will completely change how we communicate, how we game, and how we keep in touch with the world around us. It'll work with AI to enhance every aspect of our smartphones. And it'll connect thousands of devices through our SmartThings platform while protecting our privacy. And last year, we were just getting started. Simply put, this is the year of Galaxy 5G. It begins right now in 2020, right here with a Galaxy S20. Today, we're more social than ever. 
And we communicate and express ourselves with images, not just words. That means our smartphones need one thing above all else, a powerful camera. We spent months asking thousands of smartphone users across the world when it came to camera what mattered most. And no matter who we asked or where they lived, we got the same answer. Quality, quality, quality. Now, that is we so can all vague. take great yeah. photos under perfect conditions, bright outdoor lighting, no. not too close, not too far, not too much movement. Good zoom, good practice, wide angle, good low light way. shooting. Take pictures at concerts, at kids' soccer games. And you know, the way, the way Google's doing and it, it's all with post-processing. perfectly too, even if the conditions aren't perfect. Right. I mean, that's what, that's what all, really makes the pixel difference. We rely difference. on our phones to document and share our entire lives. So we rebuilt the Galaxy S20's okay, entire camera system to change the way we capture. The key to capturing a high quality photo is a high resolution camera. Because the higher the resolution, the more detail you can capture and the more you can see. Maybe you're taking a picture and you notice something interesting in the background, so you pinch in to get a better look. But as you get closer, the image gets pixelated. At 64 megapixels, S20's revolutionary camera system takes yep. smartphone photography to the next level. So when you need to crop an image, don't worry. S20's resolution is so sharp that even when you do crop, your photo remains crisp and clear. Of course, high resolution isn't just useful for viewing pictures, it's also useful when you're taking them. When you need to get closer or want the subject to be the only thing in the frame, you need zoom. And with Galaxy S20's space zoom, you can get up to 30 times closer. So, so there's something that's cool from far away, you can still zoom in, get a high quality shot. Samsung cameras are the best in the business, not just because of the game-changing hardware, but because of their intelligence. With AI, you can use this revolutionary camera to the fullest. Think about it. There's those times when you want to capture the moment, but by the time you've decided on the right camera mode, the moment's gone. With single take mode, S20 uses AI to capture different versions of that exact same moment, using each of its different cameras. Just take a short clip up to 10 seconds, and single take captures different versions of that game winning goal. Live focus, boomerang video, ultra wide, and a lot more. Then when you're done shooting, it gives you a handful of those best shots so you can pick your favorites. And that My takes wife and I are really power. excited about this. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, not only processing, home, processing power, but a fair amount of memory. So now we'll never have to worry about missing the moment. And your Galaxy S20 uses AI to make it even easier to keep your photos organized. It groups your content, making your gallery easier to navigate, and also lets you create subgroups to organize your photos however you want. You should all you have that Snapdragon 865 chip in If you identify too. people that keep popping up, S20 will be able to pick them out automatically. With the Galaxy S20, we've created a phone that will change photography. But we know that photos are only one part of the camera experience. More and more, we're using video to communicate, whether it's sharing them through our Instagram stories, capturing special moments, or creating content of our own. For years, Samsung has led the market in 8K TV technology. And today, 8K. we're bringing that expertise to mobile. Thanks to S20's super high resolution, you can capture videos in stunning 8K. That's right. What is the memory going to be for that? I mean, like you said, that takes a lot of memory. Video. And it's now going to take a huge amount of memory. Right from your phone. And I mean, they're, they're going to have to In do fact, the compression we built an entire the right 8K way. Ecosystem. It's still, you can that's shoot cool. 8K footage from the camera in your pocket. H.265, but you know, to over 5G network, this is going to be great. And tap you to cast yeah. it to your 8K QLED TV. <laughs> that way, you can enjoy your high quality video right on the big screen. From capture I'm more to interested casting, in being able to throw that stuff up TV. on YouTube. It's a full 8K experience. To truly understand how this 8K ecosystem comes together, you've got to see it for yourself. So with the help of filmmaker and adventure Sam Evans, let's take a look. Hey everyone, I'm Sam and I'm a content creator from Australia. I'm here in the product demo zone to show you exactly how the S20 works. So you've already heard a lot about it, but you really have to see it in action. Actually, you already have. Do you remember the video you saw earlier 
the one with the cable cars and the Golden Gate Bridge, moving through San Francisco. What? I, I actually shot that. that whole film on the S20. I'm so amazed by what this phone can do. So I've traveled around San Francisco with the S20 and managed to get some pretty incredible footage. For me, 8K footage is a game changer. With the extra resolution, it allows me to edit my footage exactly the way I want. Here's some 8K footage I captured over San Francisco. Looks great, right? And I'm more interested in that's super easy. Whether it's going to support I can HDR. Share with my friends by uploading like, it can you shoot? YouTube. Can you shoot an so HDR and upload that way? He's just quality. asking that right now on YouTube. I already I uploaded some AK footage to show you how it looks. Now we can watch this on the phone, or using the YouTube app on an 8K QLED TV. We can watch it there. Hmm. Let's check it out. I mean, that's really cool. It's just not useful but to most people. Yeah, for most people, aren't going to so cool. Most people don't have an Capture 8K Capture a moment television. in 8K. Share it with your friends, watch it together, all through the S20. Check it out for yourself. After the show, come on down to the product experience zone and see it for yourself. Thanks, everyone. Back to you, Drew. Okay, cool feature. That's Not fine. Like that. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, one thing I could say with the 8K him. is if you're editing, you could zoom in and crop. Video is yes, exactly. Have that kind of resolution. The best you know, quality for your best aspect memories. that you can use. It takes smartphone recording to a whole new level and it opens the door to some entirely new experiences that have never before been possible. Really surprised not to hear them talk about Record HDR. Record a video, then scroll Ooh. through the footage yeah. to find the perfect moment. Because that's such a, a big click, part. You'll get a 33 megapixel still photo with amazing resolution. You can crop any frame and always get a high quality picture. With 8K, S20 revolutionizes your photo and video experience. And it's designed for pro-grade filmmaking. Pro mode, you can adjust aperture, exposure, and settings that you usually have control over with a DSLR. We even enhance super steady mode, so you can take There's your stabilization on the right go, there. Thanks to AI motion analysis and an anti-rolling stabilizer. This camera isn't just good, it's in a class of its own, right down to its performance specs. It's got a powerful processor, an all-day battery, and thanks to the Galaxy S20's incredible storage capacity, up to a terabyte and a half using a micro SD card, you'll have plenty of room for all okay, your favorite right, terabyte photos and, and half. videos. But what's on board? That's and what I want to know. And you can share know. those photos and videos more easily than I'm ever, sure we too. I'm sure we have that posted, with actually. With S20, you can share files with up to five friends at the same time without even having to pair your devices. Every incredible innovation you've heard about so far, from 8K video to promo to sharing, is available on all three models of the Galaxy S20 series. Because we don't believe in compromising when it comes to camera quality. And for the people who want even more, the serious professional photographers who need the best of the best, gigs. we're proud to oh, introduce Lord. the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Which this device has the largest, most AK. powerful no. image sensor we've ever put on a smartphone. Here we go. You want high resolution, it has an unbelievable 108 megapixel AI camera. So you can capture scenes with a level of detail you've never experienced. With a camera this high quality, you don't just get one picture. Zoom in any one part and a new world comes to light. You practically get a photo album's worth of detail in a single shot. We rebuilt the entire camera system with brand new sensors to help you focus quickly and accurately. S20 Ultra takes multiple frames using software along with hardware to merge them all into one high They're really photo. trying to stick it to the iPhone and 11 Pro. And it does it Pro. all in a tenth of a second, much faster than any smartphone out there. This technology combined with a bright night sensor means you'll get bright, accurate pictures even in low light. All three models of the S20 take amazing low light photos. But the S20 Ultra takes it even further. This phone takes some of the best, brightest photos I've ever seen. That's because Samsung's pioneering nonobinning technology combines nine pixels into one. This is them going after All Google, All at the sensor like. level mm -hmm. using AI. That just means that each pixel is larger than ever before and can capture three times more light in every image. Yeah, it's going off that Google night mode. That's so yep. S20 Ultra comes with an advanced, cutting-edge zoom function. See, for camera zoom, you usually need more focal length, which means a bulkier device. But when it comes to smartphones, that isn't a great option. 
You want the device to stay as thin as possible. So we built it with a folded lens. When the light enters the telelens, it's refracted at an angle, producing a powerful zoom effect. The folded lens That's allows clever. up to yeah. 10x hybrid optic zoom. Now multiply that with a 10x digital zoom, and you can magnify a shot up to 100 times. 10x optical. Oh, that's what you'd yeah. expect from a it telescope. Is good. Yeah. To show us and just then at that high that resolution, zoom is. that's a 10 times yeah. digital. Mirror to try it out for themselves. Here, let's check it out. What's up, everyone? I'm Colin, and I'm Samir, and we're coming to you here at Hawk Hill. Now, we've been making YouTube videos and telling stories together for a long time. We shot our first video over eight years ago. And as we've evolved as filmmakers and storytellers, our gear has evolved too. Today, we travel around with bags, big cameras, and bulky lenses. But at the end of the day, the story is what matters most. And we need a versatile camera that can travel anywhere with us and capture it all. That's why we're so excited about the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Okay, so check this out. We're gonna shoot this scene right here on the ultra wide mode. So right here, this is one of the best views of San Francisco. You got the city in the background, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge, and over there, that tiny dot on the left side of your screen, that's Alcatraz. Okay, you're telling me that that dot is Alcatraz. Nah, that's exactly what I'm telling you, Colin. That is Alcatraz. If you're so sure, prove it. Okay, well, I'm gonna get you closer and I'm gonna prove that to you. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Check this out. Whoa, that's incredible. That's Alcatraz at 30 times zoom. So that tiny dot in frame that I just showed you now fills the entire screen. Let me show you where we started from. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, Whoa. that's what. Unbelievable. Now, normally to get a shot like that, we would have to swap lenses. But now we can get this ultra wide you're looking at as well as that close up all with a single device. Samir, I I've got a question for you. What's up, Colin? From where we are, can you Colin? spot the Palace of Fine Arts? <laughs> you know where the show's happening right now? Yes. No, oh, man, I don't, I don't think so. You still looking? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still looking, man. It's, you, it's far. You're not gonna find it. That's great. Let me show you. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's see it. We Whoa. work up a routine like this. Whoa. Absolutely. Okay. Whoa! That's crazy. That's the Palace of What's Fine up, Arts <laughs> at 100 times zoom. Wait, that's amazing. I can barely see it over here. And now I'm gonna bring it back out to the ultra wide. Yeah, wow. that's that's pretty incredible. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the craziest part of all of this to me is that you can go from ultra wide to a hundred times zoom and back all with a phone. With the S20 Ultra's 100 times zoom, you now have the most versatile Will this be the most tool that expensive fits right in your pocket. I mean, eight years phone. ago when we first started making YouTube videos, Ever. that's not stories, a fold. You could yeah. never imagine having a device I, I, like this. I honestly this expect this to be more expensive than the storytelling for the Z ever. Flip. And we can't wait for all go of you to handle. So that's yeah. it for us up here. 15 or maybe Hill. even 16. Demo, I mean, I expect some of you ridiculous sticker shock. Thanks, guys. They're not going to put Amazing, a camera right? system that advanced in a phone and not no charge you through the nose for it. No matter which model of S20 series yeah. you choose, we've changed the way you capture. Cameras are how we turn moments into memories, and that goes for this show, too. As TM mentioned earlier, we're streaming today's event with S20 devices. Give it up for the camera crew. Pretty incredible. So you just saw what Colin and Tamir could do with an S20. And earlier you saw Sam's demo, also filmed with one. Now, let's see what happens when you put an S20 in the hands of Academy Award winning director, Jimmy Chin. How about you put it in the hands of Hi, Digital Trends Jimmy Live? Chin, and yeah. I'm let's let's Galaxy start shooting Center. Digital Trends Live. I'm in Jackson Hall, Wyoming, and in 8K. I have lived here for the last 20 years. Save some space up in here. Even, One of the reasons I really <laughs> love Jackson is because of the mountains. I want to see how good my so makeup when I come looks home, in 8K. That's really the thing. Yeah, you'll be able, able to tell. Be in the mountains in my own space, um, in my own time. But the landscape is so inspiring. Right, it's hard for me to stop shooting and creating content. To be you able to what? shoot 8K on the, the Galaxy Ultra. S20 Ultra did. is extraordinary. Starts Being at a photographer and Starts a filmmaker, at 14. Starts at 14. the quality of the images or the footage is something I'm kind of obsessed with. So it's nice to just be able to shoot with my Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, you know, just something I can put in my pocket. For me to have creative freedom, it's often about having the right tool something that allows me to be spontaneous and to be able to capture an experience in the moment and on the fly. 
that's what the galaxy does for me. Incredible. And it was all shot with the S20 series. We're really excited to have Jimmy on board. He's one of the most talented storytellers out there. And behind every great story is a creator. At Samsung, we empower those creators to break barriers, defy odds, and push the limits of creativity through technology. They inspire us, and they inspire Netflix. So together, we're helping a group of Netflix creators tell companion and bonus stories based on their movies and shows. Who do you think the celebrity's gonna be? All with the help of S20's new state-of-the-art camera system. Dude, I honestly have to zero idea. To tell you more idea. about our new partnership, please I welcome Netflix CMO, Jackie Lee Joe. You think what? I think The Rock is gonna show up. You think The Rock is I'm, showing up? I'm saying I think The Rock is gonna show up. This is just a completely random prediction. But they gotta have some celebrity towards the end. They always yeah. do now. Thank you so much, Drew. It's so great to be here today at this year's Unpacked. Netflix and Samsung have a long-standing, decade-long relationship. And every step of the way, it's been all about working to create the best entertainment viewing experience for our members. We've worked together on many initiatives over the years. Two recent examples include tracking down Breaking Bad's Hugh Babineau together as part of a joint marketing campaign He's finally out of the safe house, by the way. And we even got Ryan Reynolds in on the action by making an ad for QLED that was actually an ad for Six Underground. That, that was, was also an ad. Not so secretly an ad for Aviation A Gin. Yeah. So it's been mm -hmm. a lot of fun. And today, we're here to announce the next stage in this partnership. Today, Netflix is being announced as Samsung's mobile entertainment partner. The mission of this partnership? To make the Netflix viewing experience on Samsung Mobile the absolute best it can be. Well, that means this you're gonna have to add a whole bunch even of more users functionality. can enjoy HDR. our best-in-class stories across all genres through even better product integration with Galaxy mobile devices. And to make it even more exciting, in the coming months, Samsung mobile users will have access to a whole host of new and exciting bonus content based on some of your favorite Netflix originals, accessible through Samsung Daily and Samsung channels. The content will shine a light yeah. on our well, diverse mix of creators from all around the world, a selection of whom will be handed a Galaxy S20 to shoot this content for themselves offering them the freedom to continue inventing new ways to tell stories their way. You can expect to hear from the mind behind great stories like Narcos, Centenia, Elite. It's a bunch of like insider well info that I don't. And so many more. I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I'm not interested with. in this at all. We believe this significant partnership will provide millions of Samsung mobile users across the globe the best mobile entertainment experience and make discovering new stories around the world easier than ever. After all, great stories come from anywhere and to be loved everywhere. Thank you. Back to you, Drew. I mean, next product, please. Yeah, that, I don't feel like that's something that consumers are necessarily that seems that? like a corporate <clears throat> crowing Netflix sort of thing. You know, we're partnered with Netflix. Well, lots of people partner with creating Netflix. creating new movies and shows for us to enjoy every day. We are thrilled to partner with Netflix to help lead those innovations. Maybe this is their subtle dig at Apple TV+. And reimagine entertainment you know? together. I, I don't know. We can't Even wait to that's see a stretch. Yeah. In the meantime, though, we're making it easier to find the content you want right now. Let's say you're looking for a new movie or show. With S20, you'll be able to ask Bixby to play Stranger Things. Bixby, or type there a title he is. right into your phone search it. bar. In seconds, it'll come up on your Netflix app. If you're looking for something new, no problem. We've integrated Netflix on your Samsung Daily page to offer recommendations based on what you already watch. And with 5G, you'll be able to take your entertainment anywhere you go. If you're boarding a plane, but forgot to download a movie or show, don't worry. With 5G, you can download them in a flash. If you're lucky to be somewhere where because there's 5G. Because that's what mobile right. entertainment yeah. is all about. 
getting the content you want when you want it. You've seen how S20's camera helps you capture content of your own. You've seen how it helps professionals bring new stories to life. And next, you'll see how it helps you communicate with the people in your life. To tell you more, please welcome my friend and colleague, David Park. Um, if we're in for some kind of like video conferencing. Thanks, Drew. How's everyone doing today? Well, Google's got something that they're going to be announcing, so maybe it's part of that. I thought what it's Google so would announce is some kind of expansion on maps. At their core, right. phones have always been built to help us communicate. First through calls, then through texting, then through social media. We share our lives through Instagram stories and bond over viral videos. But today, communication isn't enough. We want to forge connections. And just as we're using our phone cameras to capture more and more videos, we are using video calls to connect with the people we care about the most. It's easy to see the appeal. Voice calls Duo. let us hear our loved yeah. ones, but video calls let us see them. That's why we at Samsung yep. are so excited for our partnership with Google. Together, we are using 5G to change the way we communicate. After all, video catch should be simple, seamless, and stunning. With the Galaxy S20, Google Duo will be natively integrated right into your contacts and phone and messages. There you go. You work with Google Thank to you. Good call. With our Good call, Greg. New Duo and yes, too. this is Galaxy awesome because I starting with the S20 and the Galaxy. I don't like Google Duo, that the app, very much. Camera, you know, you can chat in landscape I come from iPhone, iMessage, uh, you know, FaceTime. Full HD video chatting with Galaxy S20. And that was one of the fast, things that I hated. So you can get a clear connection about moving to Android. It was Duo. Was so when I'm out of town, trying to integrate Duo. So this looks I'm great. On my two boys, Logan and Nicholas, I can pull up Google Duo and get them on the other end in seconds. And there they are, smiling and giggling, thanks to the S20's 5G capability. Will this integration? If they miss my call? No worries. I can use get rolled Google back Duo to older to Galaxy Trump models. Video message. Just the integration part, like not the 5G part. Right. Simple, yeah, yeah. Stunning, seamless, and accessible. Galaxy S20 will be one of the first Android devices to support live caption technology, so people with hearing loss can appreciate great content in real time. Samsung has That'll be awesome always if it works well. developing tools that make digital media more accessible. The Galaxy S20 doesn't just let you communicate with the people who matter most. It helps you form genuine connections with them, no matter the distance. And these days, one of the best ways to Am connect I the with idiot on the left? is through gaming. <laughs> Pat Nato. Whether you're me? fighting monsters together or racing against time, mobile gaming has become a truly social experience for smartphone users. And yet, too often, our smartphones just don't let us play our favorite games the way where they're meant to be played. However, with 5G, the S20 takes gaming to a whole new level. Again, I, I love, I love it 5G. Displays on all it's great. S20 you just tried it out, 5G. Yeah. But it's still not that for readily available. It's not something that's going to be here for everybody for we also quite a while. No, you know, it's not. Um, no, that's, when, that's when you have it, it's amazing. I was, After all, I was when you're just right the blown away by what they were able to do like down in Miami at the Super Bowl. The and yeah, the, the mobile gaming experience being something much more like uh, a console gaming system because it's all in the cloud, right? It's not using it's graphics processing on the phone. It's using cloud-based computing to deliver the game. Yeah, super fast via 5G. Awesome, but it's such a limited number of areas you can actually enjoy that. Faster data access speeds and as much as 20% less power usage than before. You'll be able to choose your favorite apps to quick launch, and you can start right where you left off. That's a game changer for gamers, but at Samsung, we want to take mobile gaming even further. Last year, Microsoft helped us change the way we use our phones by helping us make PC to smartphone experience more seamless than ever before. This year, we are extending that partnership to gaming with Xbox. Great gaming experience. Interesting. Yep. Great games, right? Well, we got you covered. Xbox Game Studio is bringing Forza Street to smartphones for the very first time across Galaxy devices. There's that answer to Stadia. Yep. The Galaxy S20 is the perfect gaming device for Forza Street. 
its new dynamic AMOLED display is the most Let me connect an Xbox controller and device. then we're talking. I hate motion and clear game. I hate screen-based controls. Hyper fast response That's just touch me. gives you the edge over your competition and fast-paced one-on-one race, races. I'm I'm fine Our with it hardware as long as it's software deliver power. The game is built for it. Minimal. Right. So you can play anywhere, anytime. We're also pleased to announce that Forza Street is now available for pre-registration on the Galaxy Store, so go check it out. The, the best Galaxy part is, Store. thank you. The best part is, this is just the beginning of our gaming partnership with Xbox. Both Samsung and Xbox share a vision for bringing great gaming experiences to mobile players around the world. With our 5G enabled portfolios, oh, there you go. and the Microsoft's rich there history it is. of gaming, we are working closely together to create a premium, cloud-based game streaming experience. Straight up, yep. and you'll hear more about it later this year. Playing video games with our friends, video chatting with our family, watching movies with other partners, Galaxy S20 has countless ways to connect with the people we love. But we can also connect through something universal, and that's music. That right song, or the play perfect playlist can help us scale new heights and stay in tune with ourselves. And today, we are reimagining how you listen to your favorite music on the go. Introducing Galaxy Buds Plus. There they are. There it is. So the rumors here were slightly larger battery. I think we took some the original assistive Galaxy Buds and hearing. sound quality. Buds Plus the don't just have one speaker, they have two. Optimized for a high note, one for bass. With speakers almost 40% larger than before, they don't just give you more sound, they give you better sound. Those look like balanced AKG's armatures. AKG's renowned sound signature also keeps your music crystal clear. And that's not all. Thanks to our partnership with Spotify, with one simple long press on the side of your buds, you get recommended songs based on your music history. So you can create that magical moment when you hear a new band for the first time. Of course, we use your buds for more than music. That's why we also optimize Buds Plus for calls. Instead of the standard two mics, these Buds have three. So even if you're calling from a crowded street, your Buds Plus will pick up your voice. We've also enhanced ambient sound so that you can hear sounds more clearly and adjust the volume when you need to be aware of your surroundings. And with advanced connectivity, Buds Plus let you switch quickly between devices from smartphone to smartwatch, from tablet to TV. That'll be key. Simple mm -hmm. tap on the media panel on your phone. You can do it all without needing to unpair and repair your devices. Smart, that's, smart, smart, smart. That's nice. So Plus also <clears throat> works seamlessly with iOS. Just download the Galaxy wearable app from the App Store to customize your music experience. Yep. Buds Plus are powerful, flexible, and easy to charge. With wireless charging, and wireless power share, you don't need any cords or connectors. Let's say you're on the subway. In the three minutes it takes to get from one stop to the next, you can get enough charge to the next. You can get enough charge for about an hour of playtime. Once your Buds Plus are fully charged, they'll last a whopping 11 hours. Uh, and with the charging case, wow. you can get another yeah. 11 hours for a total of 20. Wow. Hours. What was uh, Apple's, wait. What? That's enough to power oh, yeah, with the, the world's longest yep. flight and a delay. Yeah, uh, that's huge right Soon, there. You can get a pair of your own on February 14th for $149. For 150 Oh my goodness. Okay, so for those of you really interested <clears throat> in how they perform, we are going to do uh, Galaxy Buds, Buds Plus, Plus versus so AirPods your Pro tomorrow. Nice. Yep. Want to get up and dance, check it out. He didn't say anything about active noise canceling. He didn't, not unless he's going to get into that. Uh, 150 bucks, so that's not a bad price for 11 hours of battery. Yep. Life. That's pretty good. That would be a legit yeah. game changer. And that's, I'm gonna guess, in part because of the newer chips. I mean, uh, honestly. I wonder if Qualcomm's gonna come out. And, well, actually, I did see that Cristiano Amon from Qualcomm is there apparently sitting also in front of Jeremy Kelly. Okay. That's some good seats for him. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna guess we'll talk about some of that as well because that's that's how you get that extra battery life. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, the AirPods do about five hours. AirPods Pro so do about five double? hours. 
That's uh, a memorable big. moment. And at 150 bucks, and it's so cheaper. 100 bucks less That's than the AirPods Pro. Yeah. Now. It'll change the way we capture the most important moments in our lives. It'll change the way we connect with each other through entertainment, gaming, and music. It's built for a new generation of users, for a new decade. From March 6, you can get a Galaxy. From March 6, you can get a Galaxy S20 of your own, starting at 9.99. That's for the Ultra 5G for 1,400 bucks. Starting. And all three models will be available in blazing fast 5G. We're also pleased to announce that effective today, we are reducing prices on the Galaxy S10. And soon, S10 mm -hmm. users will get some of the great features <laughs> through software updates. Samsung is entering a new decade of mobile innovation, one that will be changed and shaped by AI, IoT, and of course, 5G. With 5G, the S20 will power new mobile experiences with near zero latency. It'll leverage the ultra-fast speeds of nationwide low-frequency bands like Sub-6 and more advanced millimeter wave high-frequency bands. This feels like a wrap-up. 5G is changing the way we communicate. They've still got to do something with the Galaxy Home. The way we game and the way we consume the mini, content. I would think. And if they have it, with our partners to that make it happen. is a piece of vaporware that has existed for longer oh, than, the home? than, yeah. longer than the, the actual Apple-made television. The Olympic Games are all about bringing people together and inspiring them to perform at the best of their abilities. So later this summer, Samsung will be bringing the best of mobile technology to the Tokyo 2020 games with the limited edition Galaxy S20 Plus 5G, designed exclusively for athletes oh. of the Olympic Games. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, clearly I'm not target audience there. Nope. So the athletes are getting this a fancy phone. Yeah. 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 The games with standoff Which is great marketing for them. And it one is. Of a kind 5G performance and one of a kind design topped with a premium matte gold finish. Yeah, what are their because at Samsung, we oh. don't sit still. Ridiculous, I'm we sure. We push boundaries. We solve problems. We do what can't be done. As we look ahead to this new decade, we couldn't be more excited to continue working with our partners to deliver the kinds of mobile experiences that no one else can deliver. To tell you even more, please welcome back Tiambro. We still need a, look, we still need something maybe on the Galaxy Home, something on whatever that watch was, and we need to, and I bet there's gonna be a celebrity of some kind. Yeah. Thank you, baby. We're missing the watch. What a great show. For the past 10 years, the Samsung-Google oh, partnership Ugh. has been the driving force Another trip down behind lane. <laughs> so many of these industries' most important innovation. Now, as we start a new decade, our partnership is more important than ever. As we work together to pioneer a new generation of breakthrough mobile experiences. And to tell you more, I am happy to welcome my friend Hiroshi from Google to the stage. Okay. Hiroshi at Google. Yep. So we got the duo. We had duo integration. It's Google Maps. I bet you it's, it's got to be Google, Google Maps. 15 year anniversary. Some kind of augmented reality feature. Android Auto. Android Auto just got a big upgrade Hi, too. Hi everyone. So great to be here today with the Samsung team. Uh, thank you. I knew I could get an applause from over here. You guys are very excited. Thank you. Uh, maybe I can start with a quick personal story about how I first met TM. It was 2010. Samsung had just launched the original Galaxy S, and we were already preparing for what's next. I was visiting their headquarters and was introduced to TM as the person who can make anything happen. I remember driving around the suburbs of Seoul in his brand new car, which he was very proud of, by the way, uh, with a bunch of devices and we're testing GPS. I think this whole testing GPS was just an excuse for him to drive his new car, by the way. A lot has happened since go. those days. Maps. Galaxy I think, is a household name. I think there's got to be Android some augmented reality. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, 5G unlocks that in a we way I've never seen before. Together, so we play an important role in people's lives around the world. Well, just the recent updates. It's also been amazing to see Samsung continuously push the Maybe limits your Android off. of what's possible in mobile on the Android platform. For example, phablets. 
the S Pen, many of the innovations around the display, including the super cool foldables, all the stuff you saw earlier today. Looking ahead, we're excited to continue to work together to build the next wave of helpful mobile innovation. I want to briefly give three examples, 5G, foldables, and improved accessibility. We think 5G can uh, unlock a wealth of possibilities and new experiences. And Didn't I just that say that? Android the is unlocking? The first and only mobile operating system to support 5G today. Much like the transition from 3G to 4G, we expect these new experiences to emerge over time. But we wanted to get started right away, and we decided video chat would be a great place to get started. Plus, we wanted a cameo in the, uh, in the ads, you know, in the Oscar ads. So we've integrated Google Duo into Samsung's flagship devices. Thanks to 5G, the video calls are higher quality, and that makes you feel more connected. Also, with Duo built right into Google Galaxy's native apps, uh, that's messages, contacts, and phone, we can help people connect much more seamlessly without interruption. I think many of you already know how excited we are about foldables. On a personal note, using the Galaxy Fold, I find myself using the device in so many different ways, whether it's for entertainment on long flights or staying connected to work, I'm super productive. So we think foldables will fundamentally change how we think about and interact with smartphones. And we are working closely with Samsung to bring these experiences to life across hardware, the OS, and app developers. For example, you saw earlier today Duo and YouTube uh, with a new UI in the flex mode uh, on, on the tabletop. We have built the tools and APIs for any developer to do just that, and we can't wait to see what they do with this capability. Finally, we want Android to work for everyone no matter their abilities. Live caption automatically adds captions to content that, even if the content didn't come with captions originally. If you're one of the 450 million people worldwide who are deaf or hard of hearing, we think this capability is a game changer. By the way, live caption works entirely on device through a combination of three machine learning models. We think it's a great application of machine learning techniques to create helpful experiences for everyone. We're thrilled that Galaxy S20 is the first device in the Android app, uh, Android partner ecosystem to offer live caption out of the box. Thank you, Samsung and TM, for the continued partnership to bring amazing mobile experiences on Android uh, and to people around the world. Congratulations on the launch today. We're proud of what we've created together, and we can't wait for the next decade. Thank you very much. Interesting. So nothing much on, on maps there. Nothing at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they you know, didn't, because I, I'm with so the 15th anniversary just happening, today. I expected some augmented reality features. Yep. Maybe it's still Before coming. Closing, Could be. There's one more important topic I'd like to talk about. Well, this is the end. As always, our mission is well, innovation, not just for innovation. Innovation with purpose. This is why sustainability is so important at Samsung. And it's why we work with the UNDP to support the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So far, we believe more than 15 million members of the Galaxy community have the Samsung Global Goals app on their devices, with all processing being matched by Samsung. This year, we are also introducing a new eco-friendly global goals cover and watch strap. From the first Galaxy phone to the first Galaxy Fold, from the infinity display to 5G and beyond. Yeah, this is the end. We have discovered new ways to use technology to advance humanity. We are the Galaxy S20 and Z Flip. Thank you. We are now changing the shape of the mobile category. And in the decade ahead, we will continue to read the growth of the industry and to change the way you experience the world. Thank you. Well, there you have it. I am kind of surprised that's the end of it. I expected. Ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I mean, I expected some more uh, features to showcase with the, with the camera, other than you know shooting in 8K. That's cool. 
Um, Super Zoom. Super Zoom, yeah, that being the coolest feature of the 8K side of it because not many people are gonna have an 8K television anyway, so sharing that content is neat if you're in that elite, elite hey. group, but, hey. you know. Oh, wait, here we go. No? No. Okay. Well, it looks like uh, that's wrapping up. So here's what's going on right now. Again, we're, we're having this watch party here for the Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event. That was it, it concluded. A little bit sooner than I think we thought, but here's what's going on in just a few. We've got Corey Gaskin, our mobile editor, who is live there at the event, and we're gonna go to him live on this broadcast. So stick here with us. We're gonna recap kind of what we saw at this event, get your thoughts and opinions. We're broadcasting live. This is part of the fun of it. You know, we get to have conversations about it, and then we'll bring Corey up there from the event hopefully with some of the devices as well, uh, as soon as he can get free to, to join us. So we'll just keep on going until then. But going back through, taking a look at the show, starting off with the Z Flip, um, going right to it at the beginning of the show. That was a, a, kind of an interesting move. Yeah. I figured that'd be more of a highlight showcase later on, but they just came They right went right into it. And you know, one of the things that, obviously as they went through that, they focused Entirely on their on the design. Yeah, um, they didn't get very much into a little bit on the functionality with you know being able to prop it up. Uh, yeah, and you know take right. selfies that way, use Google Duo that way, kind of like a little mini laptop sitting on your desk. Right. Uh, but they didn't get into uh, much in the way of specs. Uh, I was just checking that, and it looks like um, that little tiny display, the cover display is a 1.1 inch Super AMOLED. So 1.1 inch, very small, it's gonna give you very basic, you know, tidbits of information. So you don't have to open your phone, you, you know who's calling, um, you get text notifications that way. Right. Um, the front facing camera, 10 megapixels. Uh, the rear facing camera, uh, it's a dual camera setup, so it's got a 12 me megapixel ultra wide. And a, um, and a 12 megapixel wide angle camera. So not anywhere close to the fancy features that you're seeing in the S20. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's kind of surprising to me when you're gonna have a premium foldable phone, you would think, you know, if you're gonna use that as, as what you're trying to get people in the door with, you would think you'd right. add in some of those other features on there because it doesn't seem like there's any reason not to, maybe there is and I don't understand, but I, I mean, think it's a matter of room. Um, and then if they're already charging this price, then maybe not, they want to go higher and higher on it. They're, well, yeah, I mean, and that's what, that's what it comes down to, I think, is that you've got a $1,400 price point, uh, and they're basing it entirely on its design. Oh, it's not really a matter factor. of feature. So if you really want a next gen performance phone, you're definitely looking at the S20 as opposed to the Z Flip. Yeah, a couple other things too, talking about the Z Flip, and again, we're just kind of walking through everything, and, and this is while we're waiting for, for Corey to be available to, to come to us live from the event. Um, if you have questions, comments, whatever you want, let us know, because our editors did have hands-on reviews with all of this, so we, we've got some of the details that we can walk through with you as we talk about it. Um, the couple more things with the Z Flip for me, I mean, the, the functionality, and this is what I'm always looking for in foldable devices, is what is the actual functionality? What is the software doing? Right. You know, what, neat, it folds, but what does that mean? You right. Know, other than that's cool, it can fold up smaller into your pocket. And, and one of the things they showed were, yeah, the selfie camera where you can set it down. Uh, they showcased it as kind of like a laptop so it can um, go like this, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that's one of those things where, you know, you can kind of see that that as being an advantage um, if, you're, if you're taking pictures of yourself. If you're out there wanting to get a selfie on your own. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the other part was the video conference calling. Right. Or video, not conference calling, but video calling. Um, that's cool, you know, adding another little functionality, but keep in mind when folded out, it's 6.7 inches mm -hmm. total. So when you're folding it in half, that's not really that big of a screen. It's really not. And I mean, when you were looking at the pictures, swiping on one section of the screen as opposed to another, that's not really a, a big deal, uh, you know? And I, I feel like as far as the selfie cam thing and the, um, and the Google Duo integration, uh, on the Z Flip, I mean, it's it's you're one pop socket away from being able to do that with your standard phone. Yeah. So I am less excited about the Z Flip than I thought I'd be. Uh, I think it looks really cool, but as you pointed out, after you get over the looks and like how it fits in your pocket um, and the novelty stuff, it really needs to bring some features to the table. Yeah. Um, and that's where it starts falling a little bit flat for me. I was much more intrigued by some of the camera stuff that they're doing with the S20, mm -hmm. um, and especially with the S20 Ultra, that's pretty fantastic. I don't think the 8K capture for video is as exciting to most people as it might be to me because I'm you know, big into 8K TVs and everything. Right. But from a resolution standpoint, especially for photos, being able to get 
uh, zoomed in on something after the fact and still have a high quality image, uh, you know, print these things out at a large scale if you want to. Uh, that's that's pretty exciting to me. Yeah, and that that is a, a really cool aspect of it. And again, you know, walking through some of these different announcements that we got. So the Z Flip, the S20 though, um, those those three different versions. You know, like we're like you're saying, mm -hmm. and and just kind of walking through what some of that it means. Um, we can go into that too and give you some more of the specs, more of the idea of that. Uh, the 1.5 terabyte expandable memory. Yeah, that's pretty huge. Yeah, uh, so you're gonna need it. <laughs> you need it. Yeah, you need it when you're talking about 8K, and you need it when you know anything, even 4K. You're shooting enough 4K video. That's still gonna be very, very, uh, very memory intensive. So you'll need that. Um, and again, as we take a look at some of the other things announced, so they really went into that. The S20 was a, was a big portion of this. They talked about the Galaxy Buds Plus. Yeah. We'll go back through each one of these two and give you more of an idea as we're waiting for uh, Corey and them to uh, to go to us live from that event. And I know it's a crowded event, so this, it could be a little while before we, we get them up. Um, but yeah, the Galaxy Buds Plus. Yeah. That was actually a bigger announcement than I thought it was going to be mm -hmm. because you expected just a little bit of iterative you know, improvement just maybe a little bit more noise canceling or something like that. Uh, but they announced something pretty big with that battery life. Yeah, the battery life at 11 hours. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's without putting them back into the case to charge, which would give you a total of 22 hours. Right. Is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, I mean, long flights, if they do quick charge. I think that you said you could get about an hour of performance with just three uh, minutes of charging. That's so that's practically speaking, right there, that right there, even if you didn't charge up before you went on your flight, you could get through a flight without missing much of the entertainment that you want. And that's a big deal to me because I do a lot of flying. Um, also, the price, 150 bucks, is great. Now, they do not have active noise canceling. Okay. Yeah. So the, the noise reduction that you're gonna get is basically gonna come down to that silicone ear tip in your ear. It's gonna be passive noise isolation is what we call it. Um, and I really wonder how good that's gonna be. Uh, we'll be testing that out tomorrow. Uh, but one of the things that I loved about the AirPods Pro on this most recent trip that I took down to Miami and back was that the active noise canceling was extremely effective. Yeah. In some ways, believe it or not, I actually preferred it to the Sony 1000 uh, M3s that I Those have. Those are like one of the top of the line. They're, they're the best uh, noise canceling headphones you can buy, in my opinion. Um, and the AirPods, I actually preferred them because you know what? I could, I could lean over and, and go to sleep if I wanted to. You know, yeah. they're not, they're not, you know, if you ever try to put your head on the, the fuselage of a plane to try and take a nap with your headphones on, it's really, it's kind of a non-starter. Uh, these things were just extremely compact. They worked extremely well. Uh, they sounded very good too. Uh, it was easy to hear the entertainment that I was watching. Um, and super compact, way less bulky. Right. Galaxy Buds could promise something similar. I don't know, however, without active noise canceling, just how well they're gonna work when you're on a flight. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that I'll be interested in checking out. But I mean, regardless, 11 hours, 150 bucks, I bet they're gonna sound really, really good. For they're 150 bucks, I mean, that's a pretty good price yeah. for, for something that's going to have that many different features on it. Right, so. I would, I mean, the, the Echo Buds are the only other uh, wireless earbud that I would look to to be competitive and with such a much battery, better battery life, which right. is something that you know people have been, reviewers have been whining about the battery life situation for a while. Well, it's an issue. I mean, if you're taking yeah. it on a flight or you're traveling or even just commuting regularly using them at work, it's a pain if you have to keep on charging. Them, yeah, exactly. You, know? you want them to last a nice long time, yeah. get you through your day, get you through your flight, um, and that's, a, that's just a big deal. Uh, I mean, that's a slam dunk product. I can see those absolutely flying off the shelves. And again, we're, we're broadcasting live, so if you have questions, you know, let us know what those are. Um, I'm seeing a comment on YouTube, no mention of IP rating on the Buds Plus. I'm not sure if we have, we'll take a look and see if we have any info on that. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good point. What is the IP rating? So we'll, we'll see if we can get that information. A couple of things that we didn't see a lot of, there was that really brief flash of the watch. Yeah, that was it, it was integrated into the Tom Brown designer package uh, the but Z they flip. didn't. Yeah, they didn't bring out uh, a new watch that we know about. So that's possible that it's just a design element for that yeah. little package that you could get. So okay, here's what we're looking at uh, for the IP rating IPX2. So it's I believe they elected to leave the water resistance on the Galaxy Buds Plus the same as the Galaxy Buds. So it's not that great to be honest. So that's that's not what the standard is. I mean, I don't I think. Uh, you know, How much of a difference do you think that makes? I, I think that you know it's it's enough to handle any sweat 
that might uh, occur. You can walk in the rain and it's probably not going to cause any problems. Um, but you wouldn't want to accidentally drop them in the pool. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> that would yeah. probably be bad news for those things. Um, yeah, I think that it's interesting that they're not going for a bigger rating number when you've right. got Jabra and their Elite 65T um, and, uh, and, and similar buds right. touting that, that, uh, that water resistance. Um, so going back to, to what we're talking about, uh, and I'm seeing somebody else comment on this, no augmented reality features. There weren't really any, there wasn't really anything. And compared to that Note event last year, where that was such a big highlight of what they were showing, and I thought it was actually some really cool use cases of these really nice cameras that we have on these phones now, is seeing how augmented reality is going to change. And that's what I kind of expected mm -hmm. when Google came out, with Google announcing they had something really cool ahead of this event that they wanted to showcase. I was thinking, okay, this is the perfect timing. You've got Google Maps with the 15 year anniversary. You've got these brand new cameras and these amazing, you know, 108 megapixels and ultra wide and all 8K and all these different things that you can do with the cameras. It's like, well, that's a perfect time to talk about integrating the software and then using augmented reality. Yeah, if you could hold your phone up and instantly it could identify buildings for and, you. And that's what I kind of expected, yeah. something like that, yeah. It, that's not hard. With 5G, you could totally do that. So. Right. Maybe this is something that Google announces down the road at their own event. Maybe they reveal it as part of a Pixel reveal event, and we just have to wait for that kind of thing. I don't know. Could be. Could be. I, I was a little bit, I was hoping for something like that. Again, sit, take a look at some of the things we didn't see. So, um, not a lot of AR features. I didn't see anything from the Galaxy Home Mini, despite all the rumors and the leaks of that there was going to be a Galaxy Home Mini. I don't know what is going on with that line. Um, you know, the Galaxy Home was mentioned, what, a, a year and a half ago yeah. was when they started talking about that? Like August oh, of 2018? Oh, more than that. <laughs> I saw like that? the original Galaxy Home prototype at least three years ago at a private uh, TV reveal event where they were, you know, th tossing some other products in the mix. It's been over three years, I'm sure of it, and they, they just haven't brought it to bear, and that's because they really, you know, they struggle with Bixby. They're right. attached to Bixby uh, as their own built-in assistant, and I don't see them. I don't see them bowing to Amazon mm -hmm. uh, or Google, which would make way more sense as right. an Android uh, supporter to to integrate that personal digital assistant into something like their speaker. They can make the speaker. That's right. not the problem. The problem is the smart part. And I don't know what's going on, but they just can't. I think it's Bixby. Well, I and, it's Bixby. unless I mentioned it, or unless I uh, missed it, excuse me, I believe there was only one mention of Bixby that I caught during that entire performance. Maybe they slipped it in a couple other places, but it was just when they were talking about searching for things on their phone. I could pull up Bixby. And that was it. That yeah. was all they talked about with it. They didn't go into it anymore. So Oddly, that was part of the Netflix integration yeah, thing. Yeah, searching about Netflix and, and Bixby. And it, and it was really buried in there, along with some other interesting uh Netflix integration, so. A couple other things to, to tackle there too, as we're waiting for Corey Gaskin um, to, to come to us live from the event. So he's actually there in San Francisco and he's gonna be joining us. So we'll be talking to him here in a few. Um, looking at uh, this, so a couple of questions. No DeX update, there, didn't see anything about nope. DeX. Yeah, there, that wasn't brought up. Um, foldable tablet, they didn't talk about anything like that. They really stuck to the phone, phone side of things. Uh, for the most part, I mean, no Galaxy Watch and, and anything like that. Something else though with the phone, so that they did talk about was that Xbox integration. I think mm -hmm. that's an interesting partnership when you get into that. And again, a lot of that has to do with 5G connections and using cloud computing. But it's that battle in the the mobile gaming market where you're bringing PC gaming or or well, that's a whole other thing. But PC mm -hmm. gaming or Xbox gaming or PlayStation gaming. We didn't hear anything about PlayStation, but going up against Google Stadia with this whole idea of cloud gaming, and you have NVIDIA that's launching something along those lines too, and that's right. the PC side of things. Uh, I think an Xbox partnership was was an interesting move. Um, you know, we'll see if that's something that people want to do. Obviously that game's big, so that would be a, a big thing, but I want to know what people think about that. Like, is that kind of partnership something that you're interested in? Uh, let us know in the comments. Now, I do know that we're going to be going live here in just uh, a few minutes uh, once we get Corey up and, and we'll be able to get to him here. So he's going to be live at the event and, and we'll let you know when that does happen mm -hmm. and, and when we'll get to see him. Um, but he is setting up there now at, uh, at this Google event. So I want to let everybody know too, we're broadcasting live and uh, he's going to be able to showcase some of these things and, and some of these different products uh, when we do get to go to him. So continuing on though, until we're ready to go, yeah, Forza Street was the game. Um, and that's just to start, they said they would they would bring more. Yeah. Um, but I've, I mean, I've seen 5G gaming uh, up close and personal finally. 
Um, and you know, there's no tearing, there's no blur. It's, I mean, on their screens at high refresh rates, it looks really, really good. Um, and as we saw in the, the presentation, you know, the, uh, the little mount on the Xbox controller with the, with the S20 phone right there, I, I, can, I can imagine that being really, really, really popular. Maybe something yeah. that could, you know, really put the hurt on the Switch in terms of mobile gaming. Um, yeah, that'd be a that'd be a tough one to do. I mean, but, completely different platform. Right. But we're talking about Nintendo for crying out loud. So yeah. they, uh, but in terms of sales, I can definitely see people getting getting into that if they oh, can yeah. take their favorite console games on if the go, and easy. the experience is exactly the same on that smaller screen as it is uh, at home. That's awesome. I mean, honestly, I, I'm a PlayStation player, but if I could do that with my PlayStation games, and it was really as simple, I could bring my controller from home and just a little bit of a connection device, whatever it is they have to make that happen, that would, that would be really, really cool. And uh, you know, that, this is Xbox that we're talking about for that side of things, but I think that's a, that's a big move. Yeah. You know, you'd, obviously it'll have to end up rolling out to other devices too, but uh, we'll, we'll let you know about that. Okay, um, just, a, just a second too for everybody watching live, we're checking with our producer. I'm not sure if Corey can hear us, but we're gonna be going uh, live to Corey Gaskin. So let's go ahead and pull him up here right now. He is live at the event. Corey, hello. Uh, tell us about your thoughts, your opinions about everything that you just saw here. My thoughts and opinions are it's crowded, but I got a device. We got the Z Flip. You can see it shining here. The special gold edition too, which we're not sure exactly if that's gonna come to the US, but listen, this is what, we're, it's, uh, what it's all about. This is what it's, what's, what it's all for. So, I mean, let's just get right to the flip, right? Right, that's it. Well, and that's just what they did with the actual presentation, too. They went straight to the flip and showcasing that. So, Corey is there in San Francisco. This is one of the fun things of Digital Trends Live. So, what are your first thoughts here as you're, as you're sitting there opening it up? How does it feel in your hand? You know, is it big? Is it small? What, what, do, we, what do we got here? What are, your, what are your opinions on this? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like a light, easy, compact device to hold. It definitely reminds me of like a mega compact. Um, but it doesn't, it, one of my criticisms of the Motorola Razr was that it didn't have that snappy flip. And the, you can see it kind of struggles with that too. So, you know, it's a lot packed in there. It's a little heavy, glass and metal. So, uh, speaking of which, actually the, the display is actual glass. It's a foldable glass display. So they say that this glass display is still going to be as durable with over 200,000 um, cycles of opening and closing. So that's what they rated the Galaxy Fold for when they, re well, and when they released it and re-released it, but uh, this looks pretty solid so far. It's a nice... And uh, just want to remind everybody to just clean it up. So for everybody watching live, we're just having just a minor connection issue, and that's because Corey is live at the event right now. And uh, as he said, it's very packed. There's a lot of people there, and so not very many people are going to get to broadcast live, but everybody is, of course, on their phones and devices, uh, taking up some bandwidth. We've got Corey still here with us. So, um, yeah, talking about how it's real glass on there, that's interesting. What about the front panel? Something they didn't go into too much was what some of those features were, and they just kind of, it seemed like they briefly went over it. What, what do we got on that? What can you actually do with that side of it? Uh, yeah, so can you hear me all right? Yep. Yep. Great. So it's a, it is a touch screen. It's a small little touch screen, and you can kind of flip through the different notifications or whatever it is that you got going on there uh, and get small bits of information. You can, like, answer a call if it's coming in, just swipe to uh, answer, swipe to ignore. But you can also just double press this power button here, and that'll go directly into the camera, which, as you see, this screen becomes a viewfinder for. Um, sorry if I'm in your way, that, but there's our cameraman right there. And uh, yeah, then you can just snap a picture with the volume button, open it up, and be right into the camera UI. Tiny um, Riley. They've Thank also done you. a little bit with, uh, with this kind of form factor in terms of the UI here. So if you're in the camera, for instance, uh, you see how the screen actually separates between two different things here. You have the viewfinder and then you have actual functions. It does the same thing with the gallery. Um, not on functions when you change it, just to be able to flip through your, cam your camera roll. And then you have a similar what they work with Google for, for YouTube, where when, and it, the way it knows is when it knows it's in this L shape. Uh, and it'll change, it'll allow you to scroll through comments and everything through YouTube uh, or anything else like that. Not a whole ton of other app compatibility, but it's definitely going to be something that you're going to put some 
Okay, and again, broadcasting live here as well. So um, we got most of that, though, of what Corey was just talking about, because he's live with the Z Flip there at this Galaxy event. Um, and uh, I think we'll get him back up here in just a minute. But uh, interesting, you know, taking a look at it actually in somebody's hands. It's not as big as you would think. No, it really isn't. It's yeah. got a much more compact form factor uh, than I was going to expect uh, from the phone like that. I still think when it's folded out all the way, you have a decent screen size yeah. there. You can definitely enjoy some entertainment on that. But, not bad. Um, but yeah, getting to see Corey actually uh, play around with that, uh, show some of the features. I'm glad we got a better look. Thank you, Corey, for giving us a good look at that. 1.1 inch uh, Super AMOLED front screen. Um, I had no idea you could actually use that as a viewfinder for the, the front facing camera as well. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah, I was definitely wondering about that as well. And I, I don't sure if we have him back up, but again, you know, broadcasting live here as we're there. Um, and he is on the show floor. I'm not sure if he has access to the S20s or, or any of the other devices, but certainly Z Flip being the big highlight right out of the gate that they had there when they uh, when they started this thing off. And that was one that we didn't, weren't even sure if we were gonna see it. But there it is, it is out. And okay. 1400 bucks, I believe, is what it starts off with. Yep, about uh, 1380. It's a very, very specific price point. And Corey, we got him back. Um, uh, there he is uh, going through YouTube, taking a look at uh, some of the different videos that you could watch and you can actually watch on one part. Hey, Corey, I understand, are you gonna get your hands on this uh, for a hands-on pretty soon? Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do as soon as we fight through more people. Or just hang on to this one, we'll see. <laughs> uh, I would be amazed yeah. if they let him out with that thing. That would be <laughs> incredible. Yeah, I could just tuck and run maybe, but we do have our Galaxy S20 Ultra and uh, Galaxy S20 and S20 Plus hands on up. Definitely check that out. If you stick with us, we can go take a quick look at that as well. Okay, yeah. I, mean, I would love that. Yeah, if, if you're right by there, let's go ahead and do it. I mean, this is part of the fun thing of doing this live. Is I wouldn't that... say right by, <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to get there. Corey, just shove them, shove them right. off to the side, you know, do what you have to do. So for anybody who has never been to an event like this, it is a serious media scrum. Everybody Madness. is fighting to get uh, into, you know, hands on with the devices. They don't care what you're doing. They, they're not getting out of your way. Yeah. Uh, they'll stick their camera right in your shot. They, they, nobody cares. They're all very selfish <laughs> about what they're trying to do. So yeah. actually, I'm impressed that Corey here is managing to make some moves. And yeah. see, obviously, he has to push some people out of his way as and, well. That's just how it goes. Right, and kudos to Riley, who's also following me along there. We got Riley Young uh, down there, and he's, uh, he's following and Corey as he makes his way through the crowd. But yeah, these things are madness. When you have an event like a Samsung event or you know even CES or, or anybody else who has a big, big press conference like this, everybody wants to get their hands on these devices and we just got our hands on the Z Flip. I didn't see if he set it back down or if he just walked away with it, I'm not sure. Um, but now he's making his way over there to the S20s themselves so we can see if, see if we can get some hands on with those. And again, if you have any questions you know, about these devices, let us know. Uh, we are broadcasting live from there. So uh, let's see here. Corey looks is like at another got him table. Back. Yeah, it looks like he's back at the S20. Hey, Corey, I'm not sure if you can hear us right now. Where are you at in, in relation here at the event right now? Uh, who knows? Uh, but I've <laughs> found some galaxies. <laughs> uh, um, so. Let's go down the line. We have the Galaxy S20 Ultra right here, then the S20 Plus, and the Galaxy S20. The biggest differences you're gonna see here are the cameras across the, across the board. You can see they kind of gradually get bigger as the phones get bigger. There's three cameras here, four cameras here, and five here. Um, but actually, no, I'm sorry, still four, but this one is actually a bigger telephoto lens. It's a 108 megapixel camera on here that can do up to 10 times optical zoom and up to 100 times digital zoom. So you're gonna get some insane shots with this. That all is coupled with optical stabilization and uh, AI stabilization and a new anti-roll so that when your phone is moving around, it also stays very steady. So that is going to get you some really clear shots and cut out a lot of blur with the S20 Ultra. Definitely my favorite so far. I do love the Galaxy Z Flip for the form factor, but if you want a beast of a phone, the best of the best right now, the Galaxy S20 is your best bet, S20 Ultra. And that's the one that's expandable to like Stepping one down just a little oh, go bit. Ahead. These are all the ones. Yep, yeah, one and a half terabytes, because uh, this will start at 128, but you can up it to 512. Same thing with the S20 Plus. The only one that doesn't get that expandability, well, it does expand, but it starts at 128 and stays there, is the S20. Um, but yeah, so they both, they all have 5G. They're all pretty 
thin phones reg um, still regardless, but the thing that you're going to step down with with the S20 Ultra is the smaller camera uh, on the S20 Plus. Smaller camera, 48 mega, um, 64 megapixels. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so that's going to be a little bit different. You're only going to get three times optical zoom there and 30 times digital zoom. Still same uh, stabilization technology, and same thing goes with the S20, uh, the regular S20, except you do not have the depth sensing camera. So not a huge difference in terms of the cameras between the S20 and S20 Ultra. We're looking about like what I think was a $400 difference from the S20 up to the S20 Ultra yeah. with massive, massive increase in uh, image capture and 8K video uh, up at that level as right. well, which you can argue about how practical that is for some people. But um, I mean, from a specs perspective, uh, that $1,400 S20 Ultra is pretty stinking impressive. There we go. We're taking a look right now on the screen, just showcasing the prices. Also, the price yeah. drop on the S10s. Um, also, a little bit su surprising, I mean, with the no mid-range option, no S20e, um, which I thought was kind of interesting <laughs> uh, as well. 4K 60 frames per second. Yeah, they definitely uh, prioritize larger phones this year. The best phone that they have is the biggest phone that they have. And the S20 regular actually... Um, has a couple step downs that I'm not so sure about. The biggest one I think is going to be the uh, omission of millimeter wave 5G, which is currently the fastest 5G signal that there is possible. So if you, if your whole point of putting 5G across the line is so that your phones are future proof, then they really skipped out on the S20, whereas the S20 Ultra and S20 Plus do have millimeter wave and are definitely gonna afford you that future proof thing. So Corey, that being the case, I know that Verizon's 5G technology is millimeter wave. That's what they've hitched their wagon to. So are we, I mean, I guess you could possibly get an S20 uh, with Verizon, but you're not gonna get 5G, is that right? You will get 5G um, when they expand, you just won't get a lot of it because they don't have a ton of sub six out right now. Same thing with millimeter wave, but yeah, you will be able to get 5G once they get those towers up. Okay, good clarification on that. But that does seem interesting that they would not support the millimeter wave on the S20. I mean, it's right. it's not the top of the line, but it is still that S20 flagship category. Um, so that's that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and, right. and again, we're taking a look at all three of them right there. And I it know is. we have reviews so, that are up too. Go ahead, go ahead, Corey. You got something else there. That's true. Yeah. So it is a bummer. I personally like smaller phones, so it is kind of a bummer that you know you kind of have to sacrifice size for functionality and jump up to these two. But yeah, I talk about it all in our hands-on. Uh, you'll see it there. It's, uh, it, there's still three great phones though, right now, for sure. I'm gonna ask a tough question, uh, put you on the spot a little bit, Corey, but I mean, based on the, the amount yeah, of time that you've had with the S20 Ultra, S20 Ultra versus iPhone 11 Pro. Ooh, don't do that. Oh. <laughs> don't make me do that. Um, <laughs> That At one, you're going to have to wait for uh, until we get a little bit, yeah, really. Um, no, it's it's one thing that the iPhone can't compete with right now is that 108 megapixel camera that zooms in to 100 times opt uh, digital zoom. So 10 times optical, iPhone doesn't have. 100 times digital, iPhone doesn't have. So you're going to definitely get some perks here with uh, the S20, uh, S20 Ultra. Yeah, that was a totally unfair question. I, <laughs> I I admit it, but I think a lot of people are going to be kind of thinking about that in the next in the next few days. Definitely. Um, and uh, I think I I missed the availability date for the S twenty uh, lineup. Are they? I know the fourteenth for the flip, yes. right? Yeah. Right. That's correct. Uh, February twenty first for the S twenty lineup, and March sixth. Sorry, February twenty first pre orders go up. March sixth they'll be available. And there's some tiered uh, discounts that you can get. Verizon has some deals going on as well, so check that out too. All right, well, Corey, 
thank you for braving this to be down there to bring us all this info about everything that's going on with them. I know that's a lot of people in there. I can't even imagine how many people you've bumped into just on accident walking through that. Uh, so I imagine getting to the outdoors is probably a priority at this point, but still appreciate you doing this and getting us this, that info on this hands-on uh, reviews and just actually taking a look at this right after the event. And I know we've got all the reviews that are up there that are gonna be up on the site if they're not already and comparisons as well. So Corey, thank you very much. Uh, run away if you need to or <laughs> enjoy the event whatever you got to do thank you for being there my pleasure guys all right so again that's uh, Corey Gaskin we also have Jeremy Kaplan who's there as well um, Andy Boxall might be there as well I, I can't remember everybody who's down there right now mm -hmm. and thank you to uh, Riley Young as well who was out there filming this and, and walking around with the with the group so uh, very cool, getting to see that live yep. from the event. And that kind of gives you a little bit of behind the scenes too of what those things are like. But that's that's our coverage here. So we have followed along live with this watch party, with this Galaxy Unpacked watch party. And uh, and really appreciate everybody who's, who's joining us along with this. And um, you know, and maybe we'll, we'll kind of talk a little bit more about what it is that, that we've seen. Uh, we're taking a look, again, we're live, so I'm kind of following along with what's happening uh, right now, as we're as we're watching this live, getting notifications that are coming through, um, but kind of repacking what it is we've seen here at this Galaxy event. Uh, Caleb, do you want to talk for a couple minutes more? Yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. I Let's like talk hanging for out. A couple minutes more. Okay. Um, just kind of giving you an idea, just a recap of just a little bit of what it was that we saw. So, uh, for the Galaxy event, uh, again, we had the Z Flip coming out there out of the gate. We had the S20. Which, uh, which we got to see, the S, and that's what uh, Corey was just talking to them about. We also had the Galaxy Buds, and uh, the Galaxy Buds Plus right. being part of it, Not and then uh, and, and no Galaxy Home, or Galaxy Home Mini. Yeah, no, no speaker, no watch. Uh, a little bit of Google Duo integration um, to make video, uh, video calls a little bit easier, which I think is a smart move. Um, not much in the way of an update to Apple Maps, no AR uh, stuff that I've kind of expected to see. Some uh, weird stuff going on with Spotify integration that uh, allows you to basically pull up, you know, new, new music with the, uh, with the press of a button. Um, and uh, yeah. I'm not going to lie, I'm taking a drink of water right now. We've been broadcasting for a while and I'm just going to do that. Yeah, get yourself hydrated, my friend. Um, it's a lot of talking about tech, and it's a lot of fun with this. And so I appreciate everybody who's been joining us here for the show. So again, we kind of walked through the entire event, the Galaxy Unpacked event. And, we unpacked, uh, unpacked. We unpacked, unpacked. And that's kind of what we're doing here, uh, broadcasting live right now. So I'm going to kind of wait and see what we're doing here next. But I do want to say thank you to everybody who's joining us. I want to remind you, too, that we do have Digital Trends Live here every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, where we... Talk about all kinds of technology and interviews and headlines and discussions, and that's what we've been doing here all day long is uh, is bringing you this kind of coverage. And uh, again, you know, talking about Samsung Galaxy Unpacked, this is the big one. We also have the questions about MWC coming up. What's what's going to be happening here with MWC? We don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a lot to kind of uh, unravel with that. Or, or well, we don't know if it's going to unravel or not. Right. That's kind of the next big event. So here we are taking a look at Galaxy Impact. We've got kind of some images to take a look at. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that we got to see here at the event. Z Flip 1380, very <laughs> deliberate price point there. It's not 1400 bucks. It's 1380. Uh, so you you know got 20 bucks to spend on something else. Yeah, and again, uh, taking a look, walking back through the event itself, and uh, and uh, showcasing you know some of the some of the highlights of it. There's the uh, Z Flip. Got uh, 5G. 5G, obviously, a big theme at this event, and uh, and uh, yeah, so it's so certainly something that's that's very important there, as far as the future proofing of these phones. All three, all four of them being 5G. And, yep, they're, uh, they're really pushing that narrative of opening up the availability, availability of 5G. If the networks can catch up, I think this is going to be really meaningful for folks. They, they do have to keep things future-proofed. Maybe the most exciting thing for me, though, I mean, the phones are impressive, but the Galaxy Buds Plus, game-changing true wireless earbuds, 150 bucks, 11-hour battery life with another 11 coming from the case. Uh, for a total of 22, uh, you get one hour quick charge off of, th of uh, three minutes, uh, or one hour uh, off of a three-minute quick charge in performance time, all at 150 bucks. 
that is a serious pushback against the AirPods Pro. I'm really, really impressed. Yeah, and uh, a pushback against the AirPods Pro. So that's certainly a big, uh, a big thing right there, and seeing the battle between those two, and what that, uh, what that actually, you know, means going forward is, is are we going to see some actual com competition there? And that 11 hours does make a big deal. Yeah, I That's mean. That's a big difference when it comes to this. I am curious about what the difference is gonna be when it comes to uh, it not having active noise canceling on board. Uh, are they really gonna be, you know, a frequent flyers new travel companion? Are they better than the AirPods Pro in that regard? Yeah. Uh, probably not going to be as uh, effective as an AirPods Pro that does have active noise canceling, but, um, but you know, if they get a good seal with these things, uh, I bet they're gonna sound good. And we're gonna know, as of tomorrow, uh, I'm gonna do a direct comparison between the two. We'll have some here uh, tomorrow morning. We'll get into a comparison, uh, you know, see how, how, they, uh, how they compare in real life. Right. You know, we'll hit the street, um, we'll check the call quality, because uh, they did add that third microphone uh, in, in order to improve the overall call quality and also the Which is big. sort of the transparency mode so that you can hear things around you if you need to walking on the street. But I mean, look, regardless, 150 bucks, 11 hour battery life from a true wireless earbud is a big deal no matter how you slice it. I mean, I'm not gonna lie on a personal level, like that's an enticing price level for me. Oh, sure. So 11 hours of battery life, that's something that I would definitely be be interested in with that. And again, you know, taking a look at some of the other things they announced, and we, we kind of covered some of the things they didn't announce, some surprises in there of, of non-mentions, but, um, you know, really focusing on these phones, and that was really what this was all about. And I think another thing, another, facet going back to the 5G aspect of things and what that uh, what that means going forward and how we're going to see this integration of, of 5G uh, uh, into all these different phones and what that means you know as far as broadcasting as far as uh, talking about the Olympics and and where um, you know they're going to be partnering with some of the athletes themselves and uh, and showcasing some of the S20 integration with that, where the athletes are going to be getting these these phones and the 5G devices, and I think that's one thing too. Is for, on the broadcasting side, you know, we can you can actually start really broadcasting with some of these phones. I mean, yeah. you, that's not that that hasn't been done before, but seeing it now, um, that's a pretty big deal. Well, you know, Sony uh, touted at CES that it used one of its its Xperia phones. Um, at a, at a, a NFL game in Houston, um, where they captured the the phone itself wasn't used as a, it didn't use its onboard camera, but it was the transmission device. Like mm -hmm. it beamed it beamed an 8K video signal back to a broadcast truck um, via 5G, and it worked really well apparently. But with these phones, I mean, especially the S20 Ultra, I can see it being a complete broadcast solution yeah. where you could do live broadcasting with just the phone. Uh, I would want to work out some sort of an audio solution with that. But I mean, whether you're take a, a live streaming event like we just did with Corey there, it's possible that we could have uh, gotten some really, really crisp imagery from him live broadcast using just the phone and 5G. That's that's yeah. potentially game changing. Once the networks out there can support it, um, that that that's a very very cool thing. Very cool thing. And I know we're broadcasting live on a number of platforms right now. I want to say hello to everybody who's on Twitch, and uh, thanks for joining us on Twitch. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, just like we are every day here with Digital Trends Live. And so, if you're joining us, you can always ask questions and let us know what you want to talk about. If you've got some other uh, some other uh, things you want to know about what we've just seen, and uh, a couple other things that I wanted to kind of just Focus on, you know, again, didn't see a lot of the augmented reality content. I expect maybe we'll get to see more of that soon. Uh, when you have things like an 8K camera and 108 megapixels and all the power of that Qualcomm Snapdragon chip, too, mm -hmm. that's another key thing, that 865 chip, which I was surprised we didn't see Qualcomm stand up there at, at some point, um, just because I know that, according to Jeremy Kaplan, Cristiano Amon, the president of Qualcomm, was there. Right. Um, I kind of expected a little bit of that. They did They did also have the, the touch on the Netflix partnership, which I don't really feel like that's saying a lot. I don't uh, think it's super meaningful. So, I mean, yeah. in terms of the Netflix integration, it seemed like they were going to give Samsung uh, Samsung Galaxy S20 and up users yeah. a new kind of experience where they get to see, I guess it's behind the scenes footage or bonus footage yeah. of their favorite shows. And also it, it, it put 
Um, something about putting recommendations in Samsung what, pages or news or something like that. Right. Those proprietary app integrations, you know, don't do a whole lot for me. Um, yep. And as far as the bonus footage goes, I mean, I suppose that there's going to be some people out There'll there. There'll be that, a market for it if it's a big enough show or if somebody's a really big fan. But to me, mostly it seemed like an opportunity for Samsung to put its logo next to Netflix's logo and flex some muscle and get a little bit of marketing love out of this situation. 100%. Yeah. Kind of seen the sim similar situation with, uh, with Spotify as well. Another big name, you know, but they're talking right. about their experiences and connecting people. And, and they had the one thing with the Galaxy Buds, where if you hold down the button long enough, then Spotify will play that channel where it curates, you know, your Discover your Weekly uh, playlist or whatever. That's yeah. not going to be enough for me to pick up the Galaxy Buds, but it's get it's them throwing in another name. They're, yeah, exactly, a little bit of a partnership. I, you know what? After watching this whole thing, I think the thing that. Uh, would be difficult for me right now is deciding between the cool form factor of the Z Flip and the absolutely outrageous performance capabilities of like the S20 Ultra because I think they start right around the same price point and and honestly the Z Flip in terms of its performance and features and specs is I mean it's not a shabby phone but it's right. nowhere close to being the futuristic monster that the S20 Plus is. Yeah. And I'd, so I'd, I don't know. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, we've got a little bit of a video here too, just kind of showcasing Corey with the S20. So let's go ahead and, and roll this. Here he is, you know, with his hands on reveal, and we'll come back What's and answer on, whatever other questions that we have. But Galaxy let's, let's see what this thing actually looks the like. The first of this Corey year, right and it's bringing us a pretty interesting device. Actually, a few of them. First, we have the Galaxy S20 lineup, which is the S20, S20 Plus, and now the S20 Ultra. As you can see, cameras were a big focus for Samsung this year. So there's a little bit of incremental changes as well, which we'll get into, and then we'll dive right into these cameras. Let's check it out. So looking at the design from the front, you're not gonna be able to tell much of a difference. It's gonna be a lot of the same edgeless, bezel-less designs that we've seen before with that Infinity O hole punch display. We're looking at 6.2 inches, 6.7 inches, and 6.9 inches on the S20, S20 Plus, and Galaxy S20 Ultra. In hand, they feel like pretty light devices, which is typical with the Galaxy S lineup. They do feel a little bit thicker in hand though, and you can likely thank 5G for that, but they're still pretty light devices, all the way from the S20 up to the Ultra. The biggest and best part of the new design is going to definitely be that 120 hertz refresh rate. It's very smooth, you can see the difference immediately, and it also has a 240 hertz refresh rate for touch. So you're gonna have a really nice smooth experience on these beautiful Super AMOLED displays that Samsung's been able to produce. Samsung's also introducing something called Bluetooth Share, which allows Galaxy owners to share their Bluetooth connection to other speakers all through the same phone. So Samsung knows just as well as most of us that one of the main reasons that anybody's getting a new phone is for a better camera. So they tackled this in kind of an interesting way with this series lineup. So starting with the S20 and S20 Plus, we have a massive upgrade to a 64 megapixel main sensor. And that's paired with two 12 megapixels for an ultra wide angle lens, as well as the telephoto lens. The S20 and S20 Plus can do three times optical zoom and up to 30 times digitally zoomed. Jumping up to the S20 Ultra, we have a 108 megapixel main sensor with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 48 megapixel telephoto zoom. With this, you can do up to 10 times optical zoom or 100 times digital zoom. This utilizes something called Nona binning, which is nine pixels into one, something we're very familiar with on previous phones, but is now getting stepped up into a much larger scale with the Galaxy S20 Plus. The S20 Ultra's fifth camera is actually angled within the frame, so as to pull in more light from reflection, as opposed to having to make a bigger sensor in total. The entire S20 lineup will use something called Space Zoom, which is essentially AI zoom mixed with their super steady optical stabilization, which now can do rotational stabilization as opposed to just side to side and up and down. One of my favorite new features is something called single take, which allows you to just put your camera in sort of an automatic mode where you can click the button and it will take about 10 or eight seconds of content. Now what that means is it could be wide angle content, it could be telephoto, live focus, or it could even be a small video. And it'll produce about 14 clips or pieces of content for you to choose from based on what it deems best for that shot. So for instance, if you're in a portrait shot, you're gonna get a live focus photo with that blurred background, or you might get a wide angle shot if you're looking at a landscape, for instance. 
This will be available on the front facing camera as well across the entire lineup, as well as the ability to shoot 8K video on the main sensors. So pricing is pretty much what you'd expect here. $1,000 for the Galaxy S20, $1,199 for the S20 Plus, and then $1,399 is what the S20 Ultra will start at. All of these start with 128 gigs of storage and 12 gigs of RAM, but the Ultra and the Plus give you the option to also get 512 gigs of storage, but no bump in RAM. Pre-orders will start on February 21st, with devices being shipped on March 6th. If you want to see more about the new Galaxy S20 range, as well as some comparisons between that and some of the best flagships out, make sure you check out digitaltrends.com for more info. There it was, Corey, there with the hands-on review of the Samsung S20. And again, kind of unpacking, unpacked itself, walking through what we just got to see there with the Galaxy Unpacked event. This is one of the most anticipated events that we have here at the beginning of the year. It always is. And I got to say, you know, it, it was a little bit surprising, again, with the Z Flip right out of the gate. You know, we got to see that, the foldable device. We also got to see the S20 and the, and the whole lineup there, three different phones coming out, yep. all 5G enabled. That's going to be, I think, looking forward here as we look at the trends for the year, I think 5G enabled phones is going to be what we're going to see a lot more of. And Samsung is usually a leader in, I mean, they're, they're one of the top, obviously, phone manufacturers in the world. So what they do, a lot of other companies will follow suit with. And I think that 5G aspect is going to be big. The question is, do you think the iPhone is going to go with a 5G later on this year? Uh, I mean, I feel like if they don't, um, that could be problematic for them. I right. mean, with the new Snapdragon processor that's available, it's gonna be easier and easier to integrate 5G in, across the entire range of several phones. And I think one of the things that we will see, or maybe from MWC Mobile World Congress, it kind of depends on how things go uh, there. I mean, first of all, let's back up. Good thing yeah. Samsung did Unpacked uh, you know, ahead of MWC like they normally do, right. because if they were trying to launch at MWC, that could have been a nightmare. We're not yeah. sure when we're going to hear about more 5G phones from uh, LG, from Huawei, from TCL, uh, Royal. You know, th these are companies that are backing out of entirely, or ZTE. seriously, uh, uh, ZTE's yeah. out, Ericsson's out. So Mobile World Congress, we're not sure what we're going to actually see from that, and I'm wondering about whether... Samsung's competition is actually going to announce anything at all around w MWC, or if they'll wait for that, whatever noise comes out of that show yeah. to subside, and then they'll start making announcements after that. I don't know, but... It is going to be a weird next, you know, this next month, it, what happens, and I, and I will say this too, it was announced today that GMSA, I may have the acronym wrong, but the people who put on MWC, mm -hmm. uh, they announced that on Friday, they're going to have a vote. Yeah. On whether or not MWC is actually even going to happen or not. Yeah. As all of these companies keep backing out, you had Amazon, Intel today backed out. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the big Japanese telecom companies backed out. German telecom company backed out. I mean, that's a lot of people that aren't going to be going to that that are that are big influencers when it comes to these new phones that are announced. So this, I mean, it could be this is what we get for a little while. Yeah. You know, we name, like you said, we may not see what the competition's going Absolutely. to say. It'll, it'll be interesting. Or if they all just do their own thing. Yeah, but I, I mean... To kind of return to the question that you asked about the iPhone, I figure if we see Samsung coming out so strong with 5G phone support, we see that from a bunch of com the other uh, competitors, LG for sure would be in there, I think, um, and then a lot of the Chinese telecom companies, especially Huawei. I mean, they're building the actual 5G infrastructure yeah. for their country and for Europe as well. Um, one of the reasons we're behind is because we have a ban on Huawei, you know, so that is true. you can bet that all the Chinese manufacturers would be turning out uh, killer 5G devices. I don't know that Apple can avoid putting out a 5G phone. I think it absolutely has to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, there was uh, we actually wrote a really interesting report. It's at digitaltrends.com about how, you know, uh, the iPhone is not ready for 5G or is it that 5G is not really ready for the iPhone? Kind of depends on how uh, Apple is going to present that. But um, for sure, if Apple comes out with a new flagship phone, a 12, for mm -hmm. instance, and it doesn't have 5G built right. in, they're going to look like they're really, really behind again. I mean, that's kind of this narrative that's been going on for a long time. Android's been way out ahead. I, you know, the yeah. iPhone comes comes around definitely much later, but supposedly they do it better, like they perfect it. 5G is not really something that 
needs to be perfected. It's yeah. you know, it's on a it's on a chip. They slap it in the phone. It goes fast. Um, you well, know, well, you either have it or you don't. Is what I'm saying. And here's another thing with the 5G aspect. We're only in February. Yeah. Like iPhone comes out in September. Imagine, you know, say some announcements are delayed from these other manufacturers, but 5G's not stopping. It's going to be more and more and more enabled, you know, around the country. I think it's, I think it's going to be a while until we have it in every household. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see more things, kind of like the stadiums, like you got to see more public spaces are going to have it. So by the time September rolls around, who knows what kind of announcements have been made when it comes to 5G accessibility. And if iPhone doesn't have it then, yeah, then I think that just kind of doubles down on that. It's like, well, you're you're putting out a very premium phone, but it's not future-proofed. Exactly. You know, because next year, imagine where it's going to be. And if somebody holds on to their iPhone for a couple, you're spending that much money, you're going to hold on for a couple of years. For sure. Without that future proofing, well, then it's like, well, why not wait until the next year when they do? They may make the argument that by the time most of the U.S. could actually have access to 5G on the regular, yeah. um, that by the time that happens, iPhone will support 5G and you'll be able to have it. Uh, but yeah, to your point, you hold on to a phone for a few years, you would like to be able to, you know, access 5G when it comes to you. Um, right. So yeah, I, I don't know where uh, Apple's going to go with it this year. I do know that I'm, you know, if I'm in the market for a new phone right now, um, I'm looking at the iPhone 11 Pro and thinking no 5G and way uh, less capable camera specs. Yeah. You know, if you're going to spend a big bucks on a phone, the Samsung S20 Ultra. I mean, it's definitely there. And it, it is big bucks too. I mean, that's some fourteen hundred big just big amount of money. I mean, outrageous. it's cool. It's really cool. It makes me miss the days right. of telecoms, you know, wireless carriers subsidizing phones. Remember yeah. when you when you just got the phone for free with a two-year contract and it didn't add to your wireless bill at all? Man, those were the days. What a magical time. That yeah, was. yeah. Those right. days are now long gone. But um, I think that's something else to take away from today is phones are not getting cheaper. Even no. the, the lowest end of the S20 was still $999. I yeah. Think. So that's... That's something that is that standard continues, I guess, as we as we go through with some of these premium ones. But that's again taking a look back here at the Samsung Unpacked event, and uh, just as we're starting to wrap up uh, here today, I just want to remind everybody too. So there's the Z Flip, and we had Corey there with the hands-on with the Z Flip, and we've got hands-on reviews of all of these different devices that Samsung announced on the website already. So that's part of what happens with these is we actually, our editors get to get a hold of them, so we can't post anything about it mm -hmm. until, the, until Samsung you know, announces it first. But right now, if you want to find out more, digitaltrends.com is the place to go. And uh, you know, so we've got all the phones right there. We're gonna start doing the comparison videos too. Yep. So doing this comparisons like we were just doing between the Samsung and iPhone or the Galaxy Buds and the AirPods. You know, what's yep. the difference between the two? We'll have reviews of those that'll be going up there too. Yeah. Yeah, if I was going to wrap up this event uh, in a tidy little package, I'd say Z Flip. Yeah. Very cool design. Um, really interesting looking phone. Probably quite a bit of fun. Not a specs monster. You know, it's 12 meg megapixel cameras on the on the back, 10 megapixel on the front. Does some cool little tricks, uh, but it's definitely not a hot rod. It's a showpiece, right? Yeah. Then you've got the S20 line. S20 doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It doesn't support millimeter wave uh, 5G, um, and you know the camera is not as flashy. Uh, probably want to go ahead and just pony up for the S20 Plus or the S20 Ultra, which looks amazing. You're getting 10 times optical and 10 times digital zoom, 8K video, just uh, just a um, this is an amazing phone. An amazing phone. Yeah. Um, and then possibly, like, the thing that's going to be most accessible to most people right off the bat, the new Galaxy Buds Plus offering 11 hours of battery life, 22 if you include the, the charging case in that. They can quick charge off of a S10 or higher phone. Just plop them on the phone and they're charging. Right. You know, wireless charging for those guys. Um, no noise canceling, but again, uh, massive battery life and really accessible price at 150 bucks. That was one of the biggest pieces of news for me just because it's so accessible to everybody. Right. Like, Everybody can benefit from that. You don't have to be a money bags or make a huge investment to and get had, into some of this new tech. Had iOS integration as well. So. Yeah, iOS. Yeah, if you have the uh, the, Sam, the correct Samsung app, it works seamlessly with iOS. They say uh, we're going to definitely be testing that out um, t tomorrow. Like I said, we'll be doing a, a comparison. Maybe I'll come visit you on live and we can talk about that uh, as well. well. Yeah. Uh, but you'll find that video on our uh, website and our YouTube channel very soon. We're shooting that tomorrow. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a big day for Samsung. It is, yeah, big day and a lot of coverage right here. And I want to thank everybody who's been joining us too for this broadcast. Hit that subscribe button, whatever platform you're watching on. We go live every single weekday with tech discussions like this and interviews and really cool uh, topics and headlines and news. And we do this all live every weekday, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. So we're right here with you. So this is the place to come for all of your tech headlines and news. And, and we get to have these discussions because we do broadcast live. So join in those conversations that we get to have. And I want to thank everybody for joining us. Thank you to our production staff behind the scenes, making sure all this runs right. And uh, thank you to Corey down there live at the event. And this is just, it's a lot of fun. And uh, we appreciate everybody who joins in, in the fun with us. You know, tech is fun to talk about. Let's, uh, let's enjoy it some more. So join us here every single weekday. And again, digitaltrends.com. We've got all the news that you can handle with anything that's going on in the world of tech. <laughs> thank you to everybody. Thank you to Caleb Dennison right here. You're welcome. For being you, with Greg. us here for this broadcast. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll be back tomorrow live, 9 a.m. Pacific, with more Digital Trends Live.